What's up guys and welcome back to Just In Time. Oh, for those that are watching video, uh, look at this light. Uh, it makes my skin look amazing. Oh my god. So today I wanted to talk about... Actually it's like a couple, it's a combination of a few things. Uh, it's like self-talk, the questions that you ask yourself, and actually how you're talking to yourself. It's a lot of like... Rationalization. I missed... <laughs> I lost my train of thought, it's rationalizing. So it was a conversation with a couple of friends, a couple of different friends that sparked this thought again in me because I, I remember back to some of the other clients that I used to see, they used to have this problem a lot as well. So first of all, let me define the few topics that I'm referring to. One of it is, is self-talk. So that is kind of well, how you talk to yourself. Like, huh? I'm not going to stress a lot about self-talk today, but just very, very briefly, it's kind of about how you, sp how you speak to yourself. If, even just me repeating it over and over is like very self-explanatory. But it kind of emphasizes on like the grace that you're giving to yourself, how you're speaking to yourself in your own head, especially when things are going wrong, when things are going right, or when you're facing stressful situations, how exactly are you motivating yourself? And the second part was what type of questions are you asking yourself? So a lot of times people will ask themselves, what I, what I say, they, they ask themselves the wrong questions. So if you're asking yourself the wrong questions, you're going to get the wrong answer, lah, or at least you're going to misdirect yourself. So that kind of looks like, why didn't I do this perfectly? Or why am I so useless? You know, if you start asking yourself these questions, well, I'm sorry, you're going to start looking for answers, right? Especially if you're asking yourself, why can't I do anything right? Then you're going to start looking for reasons that why you can't do anything right. So those that's just not using your energy. It's not pointing yourself in a good direction, lah. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was how you talk to yourself. Now, this is the one that sparked the most thought from me la. and the context of this is dissonance okay so let me give you some context so if somebody is doing something that you don't like or if you're faced with the situation of which you don't like how are you facing that are you telling yourself that you know what i'm okay with this actually when you're not or if you tell yourself that you know i don't really care about this but you do <laughs> so that's not really the right way to go about it the reason being is because number one you're lying to yourself and number two is that it's going to create a lot of cognitive dissonance. So what is cognitive dissonance? It just means there's a lot of like war in your own head. So when there's an obvious reality of something, but you're trying to convince yourself otherwise, you are going to notice, hey, these things don't really match up. This is happening, but I'm telling myself that it's not happening. Uh, then dissonance. Uh. So how does this happen? For me, especially in clients, right, I see it happening the most when people don't know how to draw their boundaries. And usually I see this in people who are less assertive. So they're just going to go with the flow. They're going to allow other people to make decisions for them. But the problem really happens when you have somebody who's very assertive, who's also kind of mean, you know, doesn't really care about other people's feelings. They're going to say things that offend people. They're going to do things that offend people. And quite frankly, they're going to do whatever they want. And they don't really care about how it makes other people feel. And when other people do not give them that feedback of, you know, hey, this is kind of, it, it annoys me or it affects me negatively. When they don't receive this feedback, it kind of, they kind of just take it as, okay, everybody's okay with it. Therefore, I'm just going to keep going. And this now creates a problem for the person who is on the receiving end. Because if they don't like what's happening or if they don't like what how they're being talked to, they're not going to voice it out. But when they don't voice it out, that is where you see the dissonance because they don't like something that's happening, but they're allowing it to continue to happen. So what they're going to do is now they're going to ask themselves, hey, you know what, it's, it wasn't that big of a deal. Lah, huh? When he said that rude thing to you, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you're really like that, or maybe you were dressed this way, or maybe you spoke this way, maybe you didn't do the work right. Therefore, he's punishing you by saying this snarky comment, and that's fine. I, I deserve it. When they start to tell themselves these things, that's why I say, how are you talking to yourself? They're kind of just lying themselves into accepting this scenario. When in actuality, what they should be doing is actually taking a good hard look at what was being done to them, how it makes them feel, whether they like it or they don't like it, and then create kind of a plan of how do I stop it from happening in future. But a lot of times people don't reach that level. They just stick to accepting how it is and then changing how they feel about it in order to accept how it is. Okay, so let's talk alternatives. So if you don't want to fall into that trap of kind of like lying to yourself, how do we get out of it? The first thing is to actually, again, take a good hard look, acknowledge the situation is happening. So it's, it's no use to try to run away from it or pretend it's not happening. Be okay. <laughs> Be okay that it's happening. And then really look into how is this making you feel? A lot of times people find that hard and difficult because those emotions 
are negative. You know, they don't really like how it makes them feel. So they want to avoid that. But if you avoid it, you're not solving the problem. You are just off-putting the problem for later to become a bigger future problem. So not only do you acknowledge how it makes you feel, you begin to ask yourself, okay, if it made me feel this way, why does it make me feel this way? What specifically do I dislike about this? Do I feel insecure about a certain aspect of my character? Is he saying something that's actually true? You know, maybe I, my work is subpar, but obviously if he's doing it rudely, then that's a different story. But why do I react this way? Is it because I believe that what he's saying is true and I actually want to change it and he has called it out? Or it's something that I think that I did okay and he's being rude and I really don't like how I was spoken to. You know, you have to really go through the whole list of what exactly bugged you and be very, very specific. Because then when we have identified the actual problem of why it's making you feel bad, then we can begin to address, okay, how do we accept this? How do we move on from it? How do we now create like a strategy, not a battle plan, but kind of like a way forward of how we're going to deal with these emotions. And on top of that is create other scenarios of if this happens in future, how are we going to react? How are we going to handle it so that it doesn't bring you so much stress? Yeah, so that was just a quick one from me. Hope it helps you guys, you know, kind of rethink and reshuffle how you think about yourself and especially how you're talking to yourself. So if you have any other topics that you'd like to see me discuss, do drop me a comment and I'll see you on the next one.